Joining us now for more on tonight's topic is Bradenton Beach Mayor Bill Sharon. And via Skype, we have Phil Horning, administrator of the Derelict Vessel Program at the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us tonight. I'll start you. with Mayor Sharon. You lived on a boat yourself, yep. so you can relate to this lifestyle. Tell us a little bit about it and why someone might choose to do that. Well, uh, living on a boat is, uh, is an experience. Uh, I'm Unfortunately, in, in, uh, in our Anchorage area, uh, a lot of the, the boaters that are there are not boaters. Uh, they're uh, residents living on, on boats, and they don't have the, uh, the skill or, or knowledge of, of being a boater. So that, uh, that makes it hard uh, for, the, for the true live-aboard boater. And now, Phil, let's talk about the laws surrounding living on a boat. What are they currently here in Florida? Well, there's real no laws uh, as far as there's the maritime law. Anybody can uh, uh, anchor, their, anchor their boat and, and live there. Uh, the laws are, are very, uh, um, very generic, based on the old-time maritime law. So we don't have any, in Bradenton Beach, we don't have any real control over uh, boats that are anchored in our anchorage. All right, Mr. Horning, with people living on these boats without insurance, what are some of the issues that might arise? Well, first of all, there, uh, there is the ability for a county or a city to uh, regulate uh, live aboard uh, vessels in their county within that jurisdiction. So. Uh, laws can be made and ordinance can be enforced in that uh, that aspect. As far as uh, people living on board with no insurance, there's no requirement uh, for a vessel owner to have insurance on their vessel. Um, obviously, if it's financed, they, they would probably have to have. But uh, it's, um, as the other guest was talking about, in Admiralty, uh, many things have gone as... Um, just a way that boat, boaters operate within their own communities. And these days, some of these things are getting a little farther away from where they used to be in the past. So and more we, laws have to be made. <laughs> yeah, uh, speaking of that, what is the enforcement level, even if more laws are made, is enforcement still an issue? It is. Uh, I mean, just for instance, uh, right now we have 368 active derelict vessel cases uh, throughout the state. Um, we're, look, we, we're estimating that's about $3.6 million worth of uh, removals. Um, this year, uh, thanks to the Florida legislature, we do have an, uh, uh, an allocation of $1.4 million to help cities and, and counties within Florida uh, pay for the removal of many of these vessels. But uh, the big thing is education and uh, community organization, maybe communities getting together and, and educating folks on uh, what, how to dispose of their vessels properly um, and not to just walk away from it when it becomes uh, the end of its life. Uh, that appears to be the main reason that these vessels get like this is people just keep uh, selling them or trading them off for lower and lower amounts until finally they're giving it away to get it out of their hands and then the last person to own it usually does not have the means to dispose of it properly. All right, understandable. And Mayor Sharon, say you all as municipalities start charging for the mooring field, the proposed mooring field that was discussed in Adam's story, mm -hmm. what do you think the result of that would be? Would it work out well? Well, first of all, in order to, to get our, to establish a mooring field, we have to uh, receive a, a request and receive a submerged land lease. Uh, for the for the land because it is state you know state land uh, and then it's to go through the process of, of putting in a, a, a mooring field so that we can have the the controls on uh, on who uh, who is anchored there that they do have insurance that they do have the proper equipment and uh, that's the the ultimate goal in order to uh, to control the the our our problem. And let's just say you start charging for people, but some of these people say they can't afford to pay. They leave the boats. Do you all end up footing the bill to remove those boats that are left there in the end? Uh, that would that would probably be part of our uh, of the mooring field uh, 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 practice when we uh, got the the mooring field. Then we would have to uh, remove the the, the unqualified 
qualified boats, and then of course any new boats coming in would be, uh, you know, insured and and uh, and controlled with uh, proper equipment. And Mr. Horning, you talked about the outreach. Let's say something like this were to be put in place. How do you all reach out to these people? Well, we're doing that in, in different communities. With, uh, for instance, in uh, Monroe County. Uh, this year and for the next three years, uh, we're going to be trying a vessel turn-in program, educating the citizens that there is an opportunity for them to get rid of their vessels um, before they become derelict and sink. Um, I know that the West Coast Inland Navigational District, or WCIND, uh, does quite a bit in Manatee County to uh, assist with these issues as far as removal is concerned. and. It's just a fine balance of education, outreach, and prosecution also. Uh, these people for leaving a derelict vessel on the waters of the state. Mm -hmm. It is a first degree misdemeanor and um, the officers can enforce that, bring them to court, and then seek sentencing for that. So it's a, a fine uh, mix of enforcement, education, and funding. Very true. And Mayor Sharon, last thing yep. here, uh, some of these people who live on these boats have mentioned that they can't afford to live otherwise. So if they were removed from the boats, told they couldn't live there, would they possibly then be homeless further contributing to the homeless issues we're already having on the Sun Coast? Well, that's, uh, it would be a different, uh, a different place to be homeless, I guess, <laughs> would be uh, the unfortunate, uh, you know, reality of it. Uh, and I want to take this opportunity, too, to thank WCIND, uh, Bradenton Beach, we're a small town. Uh, they're uh, assisting us in, with, a, with a grant to uh, up to $34,000 we've spent already uh, on removing these vessels. So uh, thanks to WCIND, if it wasn't for them, uh, we would have a real problem. All right. Well, Mayor Sharon and Phil Horning, thank you all so much for being with us. A complicated issue that it looks like you all are doing your very best to, to help solve. Thank you.